I do want to just start with some of the concerns that have come up when it comes to, for instance, things like tax issues in Kenya. And th those have been said to probably disincentivize people that would like to come and explore. But we ha we've seen actually so many companies coming into Kenya and that not backing them off. Just talk to us about the landscape and some of the incentives for some of the companies that are coming to explore in Kenya. Um, all right. Um, for now, for oil exploration, the first I must say that the government gives different incentives for different minerals. Where um, oil, oil and gas exploration is given different incentives from different minerals, which is a big um, lobbying point for the Kenya Chamber of Mines. The government is taking the oil exploration a bit seriously, so they get better concessions in terms of um, exemption for uh, taxation for exploration activities. That's not necessarily the same for the other minerals uh, that people might be interested in exploring for, um, like the titanium, niobium, gold, and uh, various base metals. So this is part of what the chamber is trying to lobby for through, the, uh, through Treasury to be given the same concessions like what the, the oil exploration companies are getting. But Monica, there had been concerns. I mean, the IMF had recommended that Kenya should probably look at lifting some of these exemptions when it, when it comes to, particularly when it comes to oil and when it comes to gas. Um, have, have those recommendations been taken on? Could we see them coming through? Uh, for oil and gas, everything is actually properly documented through the Ministry of Energy. So, and uh, not only oil and gas, but also for other energy generating minerals like coal, uh, which fall under the Ministry of Energy, those regulations are properly listed and any investor can easily access that information from the Ministry of Energy in Kenya. Well, let's just talk a little bit about the companies that have come in. We've seen we've seen a company, the companies are particularly from Britain coming in, a Canadian company, a U.S. company. Um, have you seen any interest from from countries from the African continent, companies that would like to come and operate in Kenya? I think, uh, like from the Kenya Chamber of Mines, I've seen a lot of interest from the South African farms that want to come and do uh, exploration, build mines, um, and, you know, uh, partner in various ways in terms of geology. So, yeah, I think South Africa has been the only African country that has shown keen interest in investing in the minerals industry in the country. Right now in Kenya, are you looking only at Kenya or are you also looking, because, I mean, there have been, there have been you know, um, ex explorations that have been quite successful in Uganda and also in Tanzania. Are you looking outward that once you've been able to, to get your operations on track that you would probably look at operating in other countries in East Africa? Um, actually, uh, interesting enough, like for oil exploration, Kenya is um, more or less the last of the East African country. When I say that, I think I'm talking about Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya. The other two countries had already done their geophysical survey, and Uganda discovered their oil even before Kenya. Tanzania had done their geophysical survey, and they are the fourth largest producers of gold. So if anything, other countries would want to reach out to Kenya. But of course, now that uh, we're discovering interesting minerals, and uh, so our neighbors, um, so we're also reaching out. And to that extent, we also want to put mining as part of the issues we're going to talk about when you talk about uh, regional integration in the East African bloc, how we can harmonize um, maybe the mining legislations and policies so that they are uniform in the East African states. Monica, this is a huge thing. I mean, all the resources that are being found in, in Kenya right now. I mean, Kenya has been known for tourism, has been known for, for um, exporting tea, coffee, th those kind of commodities. And now you're getting into the mineral space. And, and this is not a space that we've seen Kenya in, you know, uh, 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 historically. Just talk to us about how you're positioning yourself to be able to really capitalize on this and pro probably diversify Kenya's economy to actually be known as a resource center on the African continent. Um, I have to agree that is a, uh, like an uphill task for the Kenya Chamber of Mines and also the uh, Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources because traditionally, as you speak of Kenya, as you've said, 
We are known for our tourism and our coffee and tea, and now we're introducing this new commodity. What I must say is uh, for to start with that Kenya is an, is an exploration destination. We are yet to become a mining destination, and either way, the amount of resources Kenya has might not turn us into a big mining um, um, destination, because our, uh, our minerals are more or less just enough for local use and a bit for export. But what we are doing is creating a lot of awareness among our legislative uh, part of government to be able to legislate properly for our minerals. Also create a lot of awareness among the Kenyans themselves as to uh, the laws and the constitution and uh, how to govern the minerals. As the Kenya Chamber of Mine, we are also organizing the Mining Business and Investment Conference, which we started uh, organizing last year. We are having a second one this year in September, and the aim of this uh, for sort of conference is awareness creation and showcasing the various uh, mining projects that are currently in the country, exploration activities, who are the investors, uh, what is the government regulation about this. So we are doing a lot towards awareness creation and also towards attracting investors who are interested in coming in at this early stage in Kenya. Monica, one of the things that have been found in Kenya have been rare earths and, and, and that a very interesting commodity. I mean, you were talking about niobium. Uh, that's just one of, the, one of the rare earths that's been found, but also it's been said that they're more than just that in Kenya. Talk to us a little bit about, about that particular industry. We've talked about oil, we've talked about gas, but rare earths really important when it, comes, when it just comes to, to making quite a lot of the things that we use. Um, as I said, Kenya is mainly an exploration destination, so I will talk about what we already know because it's been explored and discovered, and the deposits have already been documented as being quite significant. Actually, it places us as being the sixth uh, world producers of niobium. This exploration was successfully done actually by a South African uh, company, Cortec um, uh, uh, International. And um, it's actually an exciting opportunity because as we are, trans as we are trying to position ourselves as a mining destination, um, discovering that we have um, rare earth minerals of uh, world-class deposits is actually a very exciting uh, opportunity, not only for the government but also for the people of Kenya because uh, this will show us uh, how a mining operation will work, uh, how it will benefit the locals and also stand to benefit the government of Kenya. Monica, I want to I wanna ask you a little bit, I mean, with all this exploration and what is being found, I would just imagine that not only is it, when it comes to feeding into the, to the Kenyan economy, it's going to probably do quite a bit when it comes to employment. Talk to us about your skills readiness in Kenya to take on these projects. Um, I, I must say that, uh, okay, we already have the geologists who, are, who work in the energy sector who are well skilled, but uh, when it comes to some of the skills, uh, the technical skills that may be required, um, I think uh, it's time that our geologists actually beefed it up a bit and um, uh, got to know if uh, we have exactly what is required. What I have seen from the Kenya Chamber of Mines, most of the members who want to do very extensive geology actually have to import uh, some of the geologists and some of that skill. But what we've done even in the new mining bill of 2011 that is in draft form that we are hoping to um, implement soon is we've said there shall be a, like a passing on of skills. So even though you bring these um, uh, skills that we don't have locally, you must give show us a, a, a sort of program of three years transferability of skills to the locals so that with time they should be able to run these kind of operations.